tonight on Connecticut's news station, a health warning over bacteria after two people in Connecticut died from being infected. We'll tell you what you need to know to stay safe. And a beloved cafe in New London destroyed after a fire ripped through it. Why residents say it's the center of the city. One small church at the center of ongoing issues. I'm Samaya Hernandez in North Hartford. I'll explain coming up. It's an event that happens every year for New Haven public school families. Thousands come here to Bowen Field to get supplies for school starting in two weeks and so much more. I'm Julia LeBlanc and coming up we'll tell you why they do this every year. Now at 6, this is Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Good evening. Thanks for joining us here on the News at 6. I'm Ben Golden. And I'm Sarah Sanchez. The State Department of Public Health issues a stern warning after three people are infected with a flesh-eating bacteria called Vibrio. Two of those people died after swimming at a beach and the third person got sick from eating raw shellfish. Fox 61's Carmen Chow joining us outside of Charlie's Fresh Catch in Vernon with what we know tonight. Carmen. Officials say the three people infected were between the ages of 60 to 80 years old. The commissioner with the Connecticut Department of Public Health says this can happen, especially in the summer, since bacteria is likely to overpopulate in the water. The potential threat is real. Since July 1st, three cases of Vibrio vulnificus infections have been reported to the Connecticut Department of Public Health. Two people with open wounds were infected after swimming at local beaches, and the third person ate raw oysters from out of state. Commissioner Manisha Dutani calling this concerning. It's bacteria like this tend to overgrow, and if you have an open wound, you should never be gutting into water because there are any number of bacteria that are in the water. Even though the oysters were eaten out of state, the warning still stands. People tra travel to other states. They may go to other areas of the country. The Vibrio bacteria in oysters can cause bloodstream infections and wound infections from the waters can lead to a person's limb to be amputated. At Charlie's Fresh Catch in Vernon, the owner, Charles Ballard, has been reassuring his customers his shellfish are safe to eat and have been federally inspected. There is a, uh, a great linkage in place in regards to how the government's going to alert us if there's a problem. Our suppliers will also alert us and our customers will alert us as well. Being in the seafood industry for decades, Ballard says he will know if he received a bad batch. If a shellfish is bad, you can tell by the texture of the shell. A lot of times the shellfish will open because it doesn't have the muscle to close. Okay, and also it'll smell off. His customers being smart about where they shop. I eat most of my shellfish cooked. If the places you eat them from are trustworthy places, uh, you just a little cautious but not overly concerned. A Vibrio infection is extremely rare, so your best bet is if you have any open wounds to stay out of the water and to avoid eating any raw oysters from out of state. Reporting in Vernon, Carmen Chow, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Definitely has all of us talking here, Carmen. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Let's get to the weather watch now and hoping we've gotten most of the rain out of the way. It's been like a gray week, right? Mm -hmm. I know. Another gray day out there, Rachel. Please. Yeah. I Tell know. us sunshine. We are ready to see some sun, please. And we will get more sun heading into the weekend and even some by later tomorrow. But first, we have to get through more showers and storms, especially during the morning on Friday when there is a risk for an isolated severe thunderstorm. The Storm Prediction Center has us in a level one risk for severe weather. It's a five level threat scale. The greatest risk with any thunderstorms that end up developing will be for strong gusty winds and also some locally heavier downpours. There is a small risk for a tornado. It's something that can't entirely be ruled out, so it's just something that we'll have to keep a close eye on as we head through the morning, too. Temperatures are in the low to mid 70s right now. Taking a look at the visible satellite, it's a bit brighter in northwestern Connecticut. Congratulations to you guys are the big winners for the day. It's cloudy pretty much everywhere else. If you look to the west, you'll see some showers beginning to develop, and there is a chance for an isolated shower out there for us tonight, but I think those showers will really start to fill in more 
as we head towards daybreak tomorrow. We've got moisture coming in from the south. We have a front coming in from the west and all of this is going to be coming together for us as we head into Friday morning. Low temperatures tonight not falling back all that much only in the upper 60s to right around 70 degrees. We'll see showers and thunderstorms scattered across the state for Friday morning and there could be a few rounds that end up coming through heading into the afternoon clouds break for some sun and there is a chance for a spotty shower or thunderstorm in the afternoon, but it will be more hit or miss in nature. I think everybody gets some rain in the morning, the afternoon. It's for some towns and then we are not only clearing things out, but we are drying out and the humidity is plunging heading into the weekend. We'll talk about it. Your full forecast coming up. Thank you, Rachel. Tonight, a new London cafe is surveying damage and now picking up the pieces of what's left of their business after a fire this morning. It happened in the Muddy Waters Cafe on Bank Street. Officials say it started in the basement and caused moderate damage. Owners say the cafe will be closed until further notice. It's just a great place to come and talk to friends, have meetings, uh, get a great breakfast. Uh, I know a lot of our guys were upset this morning when they came here because they planned on coming down to get a coffee later on this morning, which they normally do every day. Luckily, no injuries were reported. The cause of the fire is under investigation. Cleanup continues in Manchester after a condo building partially collapsed last night. This happened at the East Meadow condominiums around 730. The brick facade outside the building fell and damaged multiple cars. The building had no structural damage and was rendered safe by the fire marshal's office and the building inspector. One firefighter that was hurt was taken to the hospital for a minor ankle injury. Residents were eventually allowed to go back inside. And we did reach out to the property manager who says they're working with building officials to figure out what options they have moving forward. Tonight, a former Manchester pastor is sentenced to 10 more years in prison for physically assaulting an infant, causing serious injuries. Robert Nichols was sentenced for what witnesses recently testified. They say that he was physically assaulting an infant by slamming that baby against the floor, putting him in a sink of frigid water back in 2018. A jury found Nichols guilty back in June, and he will be behind bars for 40 years. Meanwhile, tonight, state police saying that they took another person into custody for a Tallinn Street takeover incident that happened back in May. 21-year-old Mark Trayvon Mann of Bloomfield is facing several charges tonight, including criminal mischief and damage to a motor vehicle. Several others were arrested for their involvement in the takeover. Dozens of people blocked roads during that incident, which was organized all over social media through an app called Telegram. Happening now, Mothers United Against Violence is hosting a prayer vigil tonight for a Bloomfield man who was shot and killed in Hartford earlier this month. 24-year-old Jordan Phipps was killed August 6th. Police arrested Chan Williams Bay in connection with that shooting. The vigil for Phipps will start at 6 p.m. at Windsor Meadows State Park, so it just has started. New at 60, you recognize these people. Colchester police are looking for them, saying that they're suspected wanted in connection to vehicle thefts. Police say the incident happened right in the center of town Monday night and on Tuesday morning. If you do know them, you're asked to call police. Also right now, all of Crystal Lake is back open to swimmers after environmental officials deemed the water bacteria free. Yesterday, part of the lake was closed after tests revealed above normal levels of E. coli bacteria in the water. Officials say the increase in bacteria comes from bird waste that had washed into the water during recent rainfall. Well, right now, all across Connecticut, parents, students, teachers, and administrators are getting ready to open the book on a new school year. But this year, the education conversation is refreshingly different. Fox 61's Matt Karen tells us about some of the triumphs and some of the challenges. Well, it wasn't that long ago when we were talking about masks and vaccines. Now we're back to talking about pens and pencils but also a few new hurdles. Here in Hartford alone, they still have to hire about 60 teachers with just 12 days to go until the start of the new year. And I'm excited just to kind of get them back into a routine. She's got all her school clothes ready and book bag and she's actually excited to go back to school. Connecticut families eye a new school year, one without medical mandates. We are starting this school year wonderfully discussing the typical issues of education as opposed to, you know, biological hazards. Although the more than a thousand teacher vacancies that exist across the state are anything but typical. As soon as we start impacting student opportunity, I think you have a crisis on your hands. So what's driving it? State education leaders say money. New Connecticut teachers paid just an average of $48,000. 
unmanageable class sizes, aging physical infrastructure, and a lack of classroom supports. You have the interventionists that you need. You have a team that's working with that new teacher, and your the mission and vision is very much present. On this day, the State Department of Education held their annual back-to-school meeting. They discussed everything from recruiting to developing a workforce pipeline. But this year, districts will be asked to do more with less, as the extra federal funding they got during COVID will run out. When that money runs out, um, it is going to be a very serious cliff. State lawmakers have stepped in to boost funding for Connecticut's education cost sharing formula, mental health and special ed. But it won't solve all the problems like chronic absenteeism. To figure out what is really impacting the students' attendance, is it family issues, is it school issues, is it mental health issues, and trying to connect to families with the right level of support for that. And a rise in violent student behavior. There is an uptick, but I think we have to remember that our schools are just microcosms of our communities. And state education leaders tell me they're also going to be keeping a close eye on start of the year transportation problems, including a continued bus driver shortage, plus how that lack of federal funding is going to be impacting district budgets, including a lack of before and after care. Reporting in Hartford, Matt Karen, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Thank you, Matt. New Haven students are just two weeks away from the start of class. And to get the thousands of families excited and ready for the new year, the district and their partner, WYBC, are hosting their annual rally and backpack giveaway. Fox 61's New Haven County Bureau reporter, Julie LeBlanc, joins us from Bowen Field near Hill House High School. Julia. The start of school here in New Haven is just two weeks away, and this event is not only getting everybody excited, but it's prepping them for that day. Thousands of New Haven families marching into the new school year. Thank you. Thank you. Among the crowd is eight-year-old Jason Myers getting ready to head into the fourth grade. My favorite subject is math. He and his family are picking up a backpack and some supplies, one of 4,000 bags being handed out today. They kind of give it to me, but I get what I get and I don't get upset. In fact, he's excited to get back to school and this event makes that feeling grow stronger. Because um, I get to see all my friends and, um, and then I get to finally talk to them for for so long. And though the rally is filled with lots of fun. Don't forget Thursday, the 31st. It's not just about that. I need every student in school on day one. They have got to be there. We cannot afford to lose an hour of instruction. Heading into her first year as New Haven superintendent, Dr. Madeline Negron wants to cut down on chronic absenteeism, which is when students miss 10% of their classes. The district decreased that number to 37% of students falling in that category, but there's more work to do. I want to set a goal around reducing that to a 25%. On top of another goal to increase literacy rates. It's got to be all hands on deck of, of everyone in our community making sure our kids can read and read really well. And this sets them up for success. It's hard. This helps out a lot. It really helps out a lot. And for people like mom of four, Courtney Griffiths, it's one less thing she has to worry about. This takes a big chunk off of what I have to do for the school year. So I really, I'm really grateful for it. Now on top of everything else, there's also more than 60 vendors here to connect families to community resources. We are in New Haven, Julia LeBlanc, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station.